Hello and welcome to the next video on this tutorial series and in this video we will have a closer look on how to react on air, specifically early air such as second air, third air or even first air. So let's start with first air, specifically bomber first. So the first thing you should know about bomber first is that it screws your opponent's eco completely. So if you want to go bomber first, you have to build a power generator and then an air factory. Otherwise you will just power stall hardcore. And also, of course, if he has an air factory, he don't have any land unit. So he either can't expand or if he expand, it's completely easy to raid him with McMarins or even with Selene's or with tanks, of course, too. And also, if he's microing a bomber above your base, he is not doing anything else. So... The three things you should always keep in mind if you see a first bomber is don't panic, remember that he screwed his EQ, and remember that he wastes a lot of APM to microing the bomber above your base. So in the time he micros the bomber above your base, you can spend a few clicks and giving every engineer a zigzag move order. Or if you got the time then you can manually redirect the move command just in the moment the bomber throws the bomb or if you're a bit better already, shortly before it throws the bomb. You can see that, but it's a bit more difficult and you get a, need a lot more practice. But normally you can just throw it in the moment the bomber throws the bomb. However, you have to take care that the engineer is already moving. So it's moving in one direction and when the bomber is throwing the bomb, then you turn around. The next thing is, once you reach higher levels, you will encounter so-called hover bombers that just hover above an engineer or your base. So the thing about hover bombers is they can absolutely be devastating to your power spam at the very beginning of the game. So when you build your first pigeons, you shouldn't build three at one side of a factory, even if that can give more agency. If you build a second factory, you should always build one pigeon on each side of the factory, so the hover bomber can only kill one pigeon at a time and not three pigeon at a time. The next thing is, once you see the bomber, and if you do not plan to go for an early air, then you should always have a scout in front of your base. It's also a nice trick to send your scout next to unbolt mass extractors because your opponent might think that it is an engineer and wastes a bomb on it. So you can see the bomber in time. Once you see a bomber, cancel everything that is built in your land factory. Do not build a halfway built engineer to the end. Cancel everything immediately and build free anti-air. These anti-air should not stand directly in front of your factory. So not that one bomb can kill them all three. Split them up and try to follow the bomber a bit and always take care that the bomber somehow is in radar range, that you have at least one land scout. And once the initial bomber is dead, you spread out that anti-air and you definitely have to go second air or maybe in third air that depends on your personal choice and maybe um, how uh, successful your rating was. And that's already the next point. If you see first bomber, the enemy, you have always to remember the enemy doesn't have any land. So if some enemy thinks he has to go first bomber on a pure land map, like Theta or something, use your commander, run to his base and raid every engineer that is outside his commander's range. In the moment an enemy goes first bomber on a small map like Theta, you have to raid every engineer. So once you kill the bomber with the free anti-air bolt, an engineer and then build just three labs or build three Selene's and send them to mass points and kill every engineer that tries to expand. Also, if he, went, if he goes second air after he went first bomber and start with some interceptors, you normally can get easily air control. So maybe on a slightly bigger map, you can get easy uh, expansions with a transport or just bomb his engines also. So on some maps, I take Whitefire as an example, you cannot go for land attack as long as you're not A on a Seraphim. And well, if you're playing Seraphim, for example, on such a map, you can almost expect that first or second air is coming. And often it's first air, I've seen even first air for Cybran on that map. So if you do not plan to go first air on that map, you should think about going a blind anti-air turret. Of course, building blind units is always a bit tricky and a bit dangerous, 
but since there is so a huge wreck in front of your base and really really need to get that wreck and if the engineers that go there just get bombed all the time you basically lose even if your base is not damaged by the bombers just go anti-air turret that's okay anti-air turret is not so expensive that it loses you the game but a bomber hovering above your power spam is definitely a game lose on white fire also if you lose always the engineer that goes reclaim the naval wreck and the second thing let's go to second air on 10x10 maps, it's the same. You can almost expect second air from everybody. Maybe not if the enemy is, air, uh, is uh, UEF. But even then you have to count with it. So if you do not plan to go second air, you either go some blind anti-air and as well as the blind anti-air, you need to go for heavy raiding. If you do not go second air on a 10x10 or bigger map, then you need heavy raiding and you need anti-air in your base. Another thing you should never try is that if the enemy goes early second air, like, I don't know, he used an engineer to support his commander building the air factory and then rushing a bomber, whatever, don't try to force out an interceptor. That often doesn't work. The bomber can bomb the interceptor or the air factory while it's built and then the interceptor will never finish and you waste lots of energy and mass into that interceptor. So better go for mobile anti-air, that's the best thing, or just go for an anti-air turret. An anti-air turret in your base never hurts. About ghetto gunship. Ghetto gunship, it's a bit harder because it can deal a lot more damage and it also can put down the, the labs after the transport has basically been destroyed or heavily damaged. Well, on, on the maps where you can, there aren't um, so much maps in my opinion where you can go ghetto gunship. It's like it's very common on Finns, on Fields of Thunder, on Crack Dunes. Basically, all that maps that have controllable choke points. Okay, I've seen it on Terra too, but normally it's like where you can go to one choke point with your commander and on the other choke point you can deny early, la early raiding with two early tanks. Basically, if a ghetto gunship is above your base, uh, you need to have already two or three land factories and they need to spam some anti-air immediately. The problem is often that, for example on Finns, you move out early with your commander. If you move out early with your commander and if you do not plan to go any kind of air on... I take Finns Revenge as an example because Ghetto Gunship is really really common there. You need to get a scout somewhere. So, especially if you're for example playing Aeon against UEF, you can almost be sure that there's a ghetto gunship coming. So just place one of these hovering scouts in the middle of the map and if you see the ghetto gunship coming immediately start building anti-air. And against ghetto gunship uh, I would suggest to build at least six or even eight anti-air. Um, you shouldn't try to build an anti-air turret with your engineers because the engineers just die too fast to the to the ghetto gunship so mobile anti-air is normally a better idea as long as you don't have your commander in base which can build an static anti-air turret which work of course too but really ghetto gunship is something that is countered by early scouting this is why you should build early scouts like at least the third unit or the fourth unit of scout and try to see something and if you see that he for example doesn't raid at all or maybe you see two or three mechmarins standing around in his base or you see the early air factory that hasn't built anything yet transport takes quite a lot of time to build then you have to think about also going an anti-air turret that really can help so i hope that answered a lot of questions i've seen a lot of people failing against anti-air uh, against early air despite they scouted it and this is why i'm making this video it's one thing to scout it but it's another thing to probably react to it and see you in the next episode